Hello everyone, Complete Indy here, and welcome to Battle of Wits. With the recent release of Universes Beyond Tales of Middle-Earth, I wanted to build around a commander from the set, and after debating between various commanders, tinkering with various decks, I finally settled on Shelob, Child Von Goliant. Shelob is a 6-mana black-green commander that gives all your spiders death touch, Ward 2, and makes it so whenever they kill another creature, you create a copy of the killed creature, but as a food token instead. Obviously, this lends itself to be a spider-oriented deck with an artifact's theme, which sounds strange for black-green probably, but trust me, it turned out better than you think. To start the deck, we want to just include a bunch of spiders. Some of them are nothing but simple bodies to attack and block with, like Ruin's Recluse, Watcher in the Web, and Penumbra Spider, but others have fancy abilities like making more spiders, as is the case with Astra of the Endless Web, Ishkana Graph Widow, and Rot Widow Pack. We also run Blex Vexing Pest and Bloodline Pretender, which both serve as cards that'll make our many spiders that much stronger, as well as Spider Spawning, Loth Spider Queen, and Curse of Clinging Webs, all of which also create more spiders. We'll be making a lot of spiders. But obviously, that won't be enough. We can play a ton of spiders and go wide with them, but what about that artifact component I mentioned? Well, Shalab creates food tokens out of whatever you kill with spiders, so we want some food support. That's why Gilded Goose, Trail of Crumbs, and Savvy Hunter are all great includes in the deck. But we want other ways to care about them too. Monumental Corruption draws us a sizable number of cards if a downside that's easy to mitigate in a life gain deck. And Cranial Plating gives a power buff that gets bigger and bigger the more artifacts we control. But obviously, Shalab isn't the only way. We're also running other ways to make artifacts, such as Briarbridge Tracker, Funnel Web Recluse, and Weirding Wood, which create clue tokens that effectively serve as a decent form of card draw. We're running Guild, which creates a gold token after exiling a creature. We have Tertiaire's Devastation and Phalagi Excavation to create Power Stones, which can be used for our many abilities. We have Prize Fight and Blight Titan, which creates treasure tokens and waves of incubator tokens. And Fey Offering creates free different tokens if we cast a creature and a non-creature spell in the same turn. As a payoff to all these different types of artifact tokens, we also run Sandstep War Riders, which will bolster on our turn based on the differently named artifact tokens we control. As an additional payoff to all of this, Idol of Oblivion can draw us a card if we create a token this turn, or create a token if we need it in the late game, and Inspiring Statuary turns all of our artifacts into mana rocks to help cast our spells with. Returning to the food tokens specifically, they gain us free life whenever we use them, so a life gain strategy has formed as well. Accomplished Alchemist and Ezra Root Channeler effectively ramp us the more life we gain, Ageless Entity and Blossoming Bog Beast become bigger as we gain more life, Cosmos Elixirs draws us a card if we've gained enough life in the game, and Mortality Spear serves as a cheap removal spell to deal with almost any threat. In fact, as far as removal goes, this deck has plenty of it. Ignoring everything that's been mentioned so far that can deal with creatures, there's also cards like Battle at the Bridge, Binding the Old Gods, and Death Sprout to serve a single target removal, as well as Board Wipes in the form of Crippling Fear, Silk Lash Spider, and Spinning Wheel Kick. As far as getting cards back goes, Grave Digger, Evolution Charm, and Vat of Rebirth do wonders for allowing us to keep our creatures after death, and Hatchery Spider, Songs of the Damned, and Nyx Weaver also take advantage of our graveyard in various ways. Finally, as some one-off cards, Monvoli Beast Tracker is able to search our library for nearly all of our creatures, Agent of the Iron Throne and Cultist of the Absolute both make our commander even better, and Sweet Gum Recluse can cheat out a free spell and do it at instant speed with upside. We run some simple lands like Land of War Waste, Temple of Malady, and Myriad Landscape. And with all that said, that's the deck. This deck is really, really fun. It plays really weird, too, in that you want to focus on first dealing with creatures instead of players. And so it takes a bit for the deck to get rolling, but once it starts rolling, you're in for a good time. It also forces a bit of a weird political game, as nobody wants to try and deal with you as you're going too wide, and instead focus on dealing with your opponents, or even sometimes themselves, to avoid you from creating artifact tokens that are copies of creatures. In one of the games I playtested this with, a shield rid was exiled instead of my spiders or any of my powerful support cards like Inspiring Statuary, 
to ensure I couldn't create a token that's a copy of Shieldred. All in all, for $50, you get a really fun deck that proves just how powerful spiders actually can be. You can find a link to the full deck list down in the description below, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, maybe like, comment, subscribe, support to me on Patreon. Big shout out to Leona Red Fox, the sponsor of today's video. And you can check out these two videos, and until next time, have fun.